What is your priority in India? That's a question. The, uh, the, the start of the Rotary year is on July 1st of every year, and so I began the presidency with a tour of my home country of Canada, and then the second opportunity was to travel here for 10 days to be able to visit uh, five or six different cities across the country, to be able to uh, look at the different projects that our Rotarians are doing uh, across India. The large-scale, sustainable projects that they're doing are incredible. And the uh, ability for me to be here as our uh, first female leader, first woman leader, is an opportunity to also pave the way for additional women to join our organization, which uh, has been, uh, the stereotype is that it's been led by men for a number of years. Uh, for more than 30 years, women have been joining our organization, and the number in uh, Rotary in India is certainly growing along with that. And so it's an exciting time to be here to see the projects that are going on and to support uh, the fellow members who are here and encourage them to continue to do good work. Uh, you have taken the presidentship. What is the main, main focus area? Where are you going to concentrate? Where are you going to India specifically? Well, with regard, to, uh, with regard to what's happening here in India, I've had a wonderful chance, particularly let me talk about what I've seen here in Chennai since I've been visiting. Yesterday we had the opportunity to uh, unveil, uh, inaugurate a new project, one million vaccinations for viral hepatitis. And uh, more than 1.4 million people die of uh, complications due to this uh, every year, every 30 seconds, someone uh, is, is facing harm's way in this, uh, in this regard. And so this project that was inaugurated yesterday has the ability to change and save lives. It's about early detection, treatment, 
and uh, making sure that uh, a disease that has gone undetected in many people, that we have the opportunity to be able to detect that. And so uh, I, what I see here is a, a lot the launch of a project that, uh, while it is in this city, it has the ability uh, to have a proven track record of success to show uh, the best the best pr uh, probability for success. And then from there, it has the ability then to amplify to different parts of the world as well. So I see that uh, uh, certainly Rotarians in this part of the world are leading the way in many different health initiatives. Other than the health sector, there are many people really focus on education sector, something like that. Can you briefly explain that? Yes, uh, thank you for that. Our organization has what we call seven areas of focus, and they're everything from the uh, creation of clean water and sanitation and hygiene opportunities for people around the world. We work on peace development. Uh, we work on the uh, basic education and literacy of children across the globe. Uh, disease prevention and treatment. These are important, important things uh, for us. The environment is a new area of focus and one of the things that we've seen particularly in this area is the restoration of lakes that have uh, gone dry due to a number of different reasons, but being able to restore them to a vibrant, uh, healthy condition, making sure that uh, the environment is a top focus, uh, particularly in this area of the country right now as well. So the, the seven areas that we have that we focus on uh, align directly with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And what that means is that uh, we as an organization are working with uh, not only the United Nations but other organizations as well to ensure that we are all working on the same things collaboratively together. These world's most pressing challenges that we're, we're in unison, in harmony, and not working at cross purposes. This is how we get things done in our world and our, our organization is certainly leading the way in that regard. Ma'am, Rotary Club of Madras already given sanitary making machines to one or two government schools. Uh, international teams can provide all over Tamil Nadu government schools. The, the, I'm sorry, the which schools? Rotary Club of Madras already yes. given sanitary making machines to one or two government schools. Sanitary, sanitary making machines. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, menstrual health and hygiene is something that uh, many of our clubs are taking a very active stance on uh, how to provide for young women. And one of the things I love about this project is that it's taking a conversation that maybe has been a little bit taboo, um, something that uh, we, we don't talk about a lot. But the reality is, is that young women who don't have access to proper menstrual hygiene products generally speaking, sometimes don't go to school during their menstrual cycle. And so their education is dramatically affected, affected by that. And so uh, many, many uh, clubs in this area are working specifically on this. And uh, not only that when we talk about uh, water and sanitation and hygiene, it's that hygiene part of it um, that is critically important. And so for women to be able to uh, have these tools uh, in order to then uh, increase their opportunity for education is critically important uh, to their future and the future, quite frankly, of their own leadership opportunity within within this country. Now you met the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister. Who are the other Chief Minister going to meet? Uh, we had the opportunity to meet with the Honorable Chief Minister uh, Stalin just uh, about a half an hour ago. Uh, had the opportunity to share some information about the hepatitis project as well as our polio eradication in initiative, the number one corporate initiative for us in our organization. And so uh, we won't have the opportunity to meet with any other ministers because we'll be flying to Varanasi uh, later on this afternoon for the next stop in, in, in our tour. Uh, did you give any importance, any, any inputs to you, madam? Where he, where he is going to concentrate in the administration? Anything has given any input? From? Uh, the conversation was uh, was brief, but uh, he acknowledged particularly the uh, the polio eradication initiative effort, and uh, and certainly the good work of Rotarians uh, not only here but across the globe in that regard. And um, if, if you'd like to comment on that. Congratulations on your first lady president, madam. Thank you. Uh, so, how do you feel uh, uh, Rotary impacts India and especially Chennai? In terms of uh, the leadership, uh, this is the first time in 117 years that we've had a woman in this uh, in this role. And right now, the opportunity that I see in front of us, uh, certainly from my own personal perspective, 
is to open doors for others, and not only women, but men as well, to showcase that perhaps I look a little bit different than what we've seen uh, in this leadership position, and that's good. It, it, I think it has a message behind it that for both young, young girls, young boys, uh, women and men, that they might look at this and say, if she can do it, perhaps I can too. And I hope that it, it uh, breaks down some barriers and opens up the opportunity for dialogue. And certainly, we know that uh, empowered girls become empowered women. And the opportunity right now within this country for increasing that is, uh, is, is a wonderful, a wonderful chance. Thank you. How do you feel uh, uh, the generation, younger generation is uh, concentrating? What advice do you give them? Sure. We have had the wonderful uh, opportunity while we've been here to see a number of uh, our younger members. And when I say that, we call them Rotaractors. And even this morning, I had a chance to meet with uh, a whole population of what we call um, Annettes. And they are children of Rotarians. If they are any indication of what's going on in this country, the future is incredibly bright. And they are doing projects on the same scale as adults. And what I love about that is that their ability to dream and imagine how they can make a difference at that young age to have service instilled in their hearts, um, it just absolutely, um, it brought me great joy to be able to see these presentations today. Uh, they're certainly targeting uh, a, a number of different things, just like our adult members are, are targeting. And uh, today launched a, 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 a period project, uh, a sanitation and hygiene product uh, project, which was, uh, which was wonderful. I had a chance to talk with several uh, young people under the age of 15, asking them what they want to do in their vocational lives, and every one of them was brilliant. Young girls who want to be uh, police officers, young boys who want to, the one young man told me he wants to change the world, and he's going to do it by being a scientist. So these, these kids have uh, wonderful opportunities in front of them, and um, it really filled my heart with a lot of joy to see the bright future that they uh, that they're bringing forward uh, to this country and certainly children everywhere in the world. Rotary Club touted uh, increase to a woman membership. The uh, the global membership of our organization when it comes to uh, the role of women is approximately 25 to 26 percent. Uh, here in India, it's about 16 percent, and so there's an opportunity to grow that. Looking at uh, trying to grow our membership and certainly uh, leading by example, wanting to grow it to approximately 30% in, in the near future by 2023, the end of 2023. And so I think that uh, certainly this opens dialogue. My leadership uh, opens dialogue for people to look toward how, how can we have conversation about diverse perspective. And it's not about uh, having gender balance per se. It's about making sure that we bring together people from all different walks of life, whether it's men and women, whether it's from different cultures, different um, religions, uh, all, all different things that we bring to the table make us strong. And so our clubs, when we're looking to uh, solve problems, uh, the world's most pressing challenges, when we bring our own unique vantage point, but then are able to collectively talk with others who think a little bit differently, that's our strength. Diversity for us in our organization is absolutely our strength. And so uh, it's important for us right now to make sure that we are having conversations in all of our communities to, to ensure that our membership reflects our communities. And so that means uh, having that diverse perspective. Thank you. Do you have any target for this year to increase membership? Well, in terms of increasing membership, we've uh, just actually realized our first uh, net positive growth in the past six years uh, globally within our organization. And my emphasis and uh, the emphasis that I'm helping our members to see right now is to make sure that it's not about necessarily growing the numbers, it's taking care of our members and the comfort and care of our members. And in each of those clubs uh, across the globe, our 46,000 clubs, if we take care of our members, we take care of our communities. And so if people join and stay our, within our organization and we have clubs that are vibrant and relevant and doing good work, uh, without having to ask people to join, they'll come because they see the good work that's happening and want to be part of a success story. How do you understand the Indian culture and Indian demographics? What is your advice for the Indian Rotarians? 
Well, in terms of, uh, in terms of the, the, the Indian experience, I will tell you this is my fifth uh, visit to your country uh, over the past decade. And uh, I, I, absolutely, I absolutely love it. And uh, at home in Canada, I, I think I probably have Indian food once a week, and our best friends uh, cook Indian. And uh, so the culture here, the people here, the warmth, is something that uh, that I embrace full heartedly, and to be able to see the difference in culture going from city to city has also been quite extraordinary. Going from the south to the east to the west, and now uh, heading north, the opportunity to, to to see the differences, the nuances, I liken it very much to being in my home country, where um, when we go from east to west, it is dramatically different across across our country, and so. That ability within our organization to, I think, I like to say that we exist without borders and boundaries. We're kind of, uh, as an organization, one big country. And that gives us the opportunity to appreciate and learn from each other about all of our cultures. And, uh, and, and I, I think that the important part of that is that when we see things happening in our world, it's not foreign to us. To come here, it doesn't feel different. It feels very warm and inviting and friendly because I have friends. To show up and know that there's people here who I already already have a relationship with, it's not it's not foreign. It becomes very much uh, our our rotary world. So, uh, normally, rotaries consider us for top class people. <coughs> for middle class, they have neat plans. You know, normally only top class people will join rotary. Normal class, uh, what is your uh, take on that? I'll I'll start with that, and then Vicky, you can uh, you can jump in. We uh, certainly want the best and the brightest in our organization, and we, we term ourselves people of action. I've added to that this year to say that we're people of action, people of purpose, people of influence. And if you think of, for, ha uh, for an example, a young person who maybe isn't at the top of their vocational game, um, think of a young person like, like Greta, uh, who's taken the environmental world by storm uh, at a young age, a person <coughs> of influence who can open doors uh, I'm not suggesting that we're, we're bringing children into uh, to membership, but we want people who um, we want people who are able to open doors, who have connections, and who are influencers, who um, are able to uh, make sure that our communities and our world know what it is that we're doing. And so we 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 need to maintain uh, we have high ethical standards, um, and we need to maintain that in our membership. But we want the best and the brightest. And I, I think that there is an opportunity for um, us to maintain levels of membership at the highest ranks of, of all of our vocations, but I think there is an opportunity to bring others in as well. And Benki, I don't know if you have any comment. அதுலிருந்து <laughs> அதில் வந்து நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அந்த நடுத்தர உறுப்பினர்கள்னு சொல்லும்போது நான் எங்கள் ரோட்ரியில் இந்த சென்னை மாவட்டத்தில் வந்து டிரான்ஸ்ஜெண்டர்ஸ் ரோட்ரி கிளப்பும் ஒன்று இருக்குது இப்போ ஸோ போன வருடம் வந்து டிரான்ஸ்ஜெண்டர்ஸ் ரோட்ரி வெரி ஆக்டிவ் நீங்கள் ஸ்கூலுக்கு படிக்காதனால உங்களுக்கு தெரியல நிறைய நிறைய ரொம்ப அதாவது இருபத்தி ஒன்பதாயிரம் உறுப்பினர்கள் சென்னையில் மட்டும் இருக்காங்க இருபத்தி ஒன்பதாயிரம் Um, if I could share with you, uh, talking about Rotaract, we had the opportunity yesterday to go and see the largest Rotaract district here in 32, District 32, 32. And so there were about 1,000, 1,500? About 1,500 Rotaractors who were gathered together, put an exceptional program together, talking about some of the projects that they all do. Um, but the excitement walking into the room, I, honestly, I felt like I was a rock star. It was the cheering and the... The, the jubilation of all of these young people. And then they put on a beautiful program with dance and all different kinds of things. Uh, 
they captured a video. I had a chance to be able to speak with all of them. They captured a video of the brief time that we were together, and I was able to see it last night. And so within less than two hours of the visit that we had with them, the most professional, beautiful video was crafted of this visit, which was shown at the next meeting that we attended. I, um, I, was, I was quite taken with what they had done and posted it onto Facebook, onto my own social media. And in less than, well, not even 24 hours, I guess, it has somewhere between seven and 8,000 views already and being shared across the globe. And this opportunity, because we're a global organization, for others to see uh, what these young, younger members have done, uh, it really showcases the best and the brightest of what exists right here in your own community. Sir, you say uh, for transgender. Is specific term for people and transgender are only than clubs. And the, and the club like uh, Athana Urupin are transgender. Madam, your advice on image theme and DTI. Image theme? Imagine. Oh, yes, imagine. The, um, the theme of imagine is, uh, I, and I selected that word not because of the John Lennon song, but because I believe it gives us the ability to dream. And to not uh, not dream small dreams, to big uh, to dream big dreams, and that's the call to action to our members is to think about what they can do, um, and the sky's the limit. And because we focus on these seven areas of focus that I talked about earlier, it gives us that opportunity to focus where our dreams go. And because more than one person is working on uh, these different uh, items in these different areas of focus, that's what gives us strength. And so we're harnessing our energy into these different areas. And as we imagine what we can do, uh, it gives us the, uh, the ability to understand that our, our 1.4 million members across the globe have the ability to literally uh, to change it and to, uh, to do good in our world. Thank you. Subscribe to Vulcan Television. Please subscribe Vulcan Television.